What do you think about when you hear the name Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? The I have a dream speech? The civil rights leader? The person that led to end segregation and helped get the African American the right to vote? Well, yes, he did all of those great things, but there's one aspect that a lot of people may not know a lot about. One, if you're rarely here, get any coverage or in the mainstream media, especially the holidays celebrating his life. What is this side, you might ask? Well, we'll go over this in this special edition of the Seven Fear Squad honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. starting in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I'm excited about this special edition of the Seven Fear Squad, honoring the life and memory of what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood for. In this episode, we're going to cover three shocking things that he talked about. What subject? Money. Look, I don't know about you, but the thing I learned about him in school was the civil rights movement his efforts in ending segregation, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and helping get African Americans the right to vote. I learned about his speeches such as, I have a dream, and I've been to the mountaintop, but never in my life until recently, after doing a deep dive into the subject matter, especially in light of what happened the last year through the pandemic, what happened last year with the riots and the Black Lives Matters movement, especially coming from a family where we have multiracial family members in our household. In the last years of his life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he had realized that not much progress had been made in the day-to-day -day life of the average African American, even with the ending of segregation and the passing of the Civil Rights Act. He then moved into a new phase of his campaign, which is right and just, called the economic phase. And this leads me to point number one. We are in the midst of the most critical period in our nation, and the economic problem is probably the most serious problem confronting the Negro community. And I might say the most serious com uh, problem confronting poor people generally. And I don't want to be narrow about this, talking only about the black poor in our country, because I must be concerned about Puerto Ricans who are poor, Mexican Americans, American Indians, and Appalachian whites. And we are confronting a major depression uh, in the poor community. According to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the most serious problem was jobs and income, money. We read one day, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if a man doesn't have a job or an income, he has neither life nor liberty and the possibility for the pursuit of happiness. He merely exists. One of the things we talk about highly in our firm is this report here by the Prosperity Now Institute for Policy Studies called The Road to Zero Wealth, which is based in September, which is written in September 2017. We talked about here how the racial wealth divide is hollowing out America's middle class. Now, the part about this was in 2019, a study led by the Joint Economic Committee found that 97% of respondents vastly underestimated the huge gap between the median wealth held by black families, which is $17,000, versus white families at $171,000. Now, despite making real significant change as it relates to the ending of segregation, MLK still believed that in order to inflict real change, the economic problem must be solved. This means more access to jobs and income, which in turn would produce a better life. He desired more economic power in the communities in order to stop living in slums and horrible conditions, increase health, better living conditions in order for children to attend adequate schools and receive better education, which according to the Joint Economics Committee is a solution to closing that wealth gap. We are tired of working full-time jobs for part-time income. We are tired of living in run-down, 
dilapidated, rat-infested shacks and slums. We are tired of our children All right. having to attend overcrowded, inferior schools. Make it plain. Well, how does it apply to us? Well, you heard him say, for most Americans, not only African Americans, but Puerto Ricans, Latinos, Appalachian whites, but everyone as a whole, the most important issue that needs resolving is the economic issue. Resolving the economic side of your life will help alleviate the majority of the issues you have in your life. This is why the motivation and message behind the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire, so therefore you have economic power. As a side note for you guys, check out later on, it's just a video has how to manage money like a millionaire to help you set up here in 2021, so therefore you, for the rest of your life, can potentially put yourself in a position that you stop worrying about money. How would that sound? Well, that's a decision I made a long time in my life, and all we're doing right now is paying it forward. Second point, MLK, believe it or not, believed in the power of banking and specifically also insurance. There's a talk that he was doing in Memphis where he's talking about, listen, there's multiple life insurance companies in Memphis. I'm like, really? When I was in the military, I was actually stationed in Memphis. Don't remember a major life insurance company they were talking about in Memphis. Come to find out, there was a life insurance company in Memphis, but it got relocated and now it's located in North Carolina. But think about this. He was talking about not just the power of banking and insurance, but black-owned banking and insurance. And not only that, we've got to strengthen black institutions. I call upon you to take your money out of the banks downtown and deposit your money in Tri-State Bank. We want a bank-in movement in Memphis. We are telling you to follow what we are doing. Put your money there. You have six or seven black insurance companies here in the city of Memphis. Take out your insurance there. We want to have an insurance in. Now, these are some practical things that we can do. We began the process of building a great economic base. And at the same time, we are putting pressure where it really hurts. MLK believed that not only how much money you make, but where you spend that money and put that money is what matters. In his final speech in April of 1968, he did that talk in Memphis. And he talked about, hey, you should take out your insurance policies through black-owned insurance companies. He called for them to have an insurance in and also take money out of other banks and to put them to downtown black-owned banks. He believed in making black institutions stronger and he considered that the foundation of black banking and black-owned insurance companies is the foundation of an economic revolution. He considered insurance companies as a key pillar in strengthening those institutions and help create more economic power for those that's in poverty. So how does this apply to us today? It's very simple. Start purchasing and supporting more minority-owned businesses. Do business with them. And by the way, for those of you in the minority community, this is an opportunity for you to go in business for yourself, apply what you've done professionally for jobs in corporate America, and apply that to strengthen your own community by starting your own businesses and treating your business professionally so people can depend upon you just as many people depended upon other businesses as well. And when I'm thinking about those names or people started their own businesses and the income that they're creating, I'm thinking about the Suazos, who's bringing over $280,000 in income. I'm thinking about the Mackies now today because of their own business, starting to bring them over $230,000 in income. Hearts, for thirty. Thomas is over $300,000 of income. Musgroves, who are bringing over $180,000 of income. Hansberries, who are bringing over $180,000 of income. Landors, who are bringing over $280,000 of income. Eatmans, bring over $230,000 of income. Mason bringing over $830,000 of income. Corman bringing over $430,000 of income. This is take home pay because they started their own business, not waiting for anybody else to land them their fortune on their lap, but going and starting their own business, guess what they're doing? What did we say at the beginning? The average income was what, $17,000? We're crushing and closing that gap 
by empowering them to start their own business and say, you know what, instead of a handout, I'm giving myself a hand up and I'm gonna do this myself. That's what America provides. And if you notice anything about the faces and the stories I just shared with you, but folks coming from different various backgrounds who never thought they'd start their own business before, but now they are. Guess what the commonality behind all of them is? They came from average and minority neighborhoods, some of them poverty neighborhoods, but they were able to strengthen them and do something about it. Because MLK didn't believe in just multiple races. He believed in one race that was bettering the human race. He cared about African American, he cared about Latino, he cared about Puerto Ricans, he cared about the Appalachian whites. If you were poor and you needed help and needed assistance, and need somebody to advocate for you. He was fighting for you. So notice that at the end of the day, you can have all these different things that, that's going on in America, but you have the power today in this modern era to do something drastically about it, especially with the leveling of the playing field that capitalism and entrepreneurship and going in business for yourself provides. Third point of MLK, he believed in this thing called an economic protest, not violence. MLK believed in love. Love for yourself. Love for the man or the woman staring at themselves in the mirror. He believed in an economic protest, which was more powerful than a violent protest. We don't have to argue with anybody. We don't have to curse and go around acting bad with our words. We don't need any bricks and bottles. We don't need any Molotov cocktails. We just need to go around to these stores and to these massive industries in our country and say, God sent us by here to say to you that you're not treating his children right. And we come by here to ask you to make the first item on your agenda fair treatment where God's children are concerned. Now, if you are not prepared to do that, we do have an agenda that we must follow. And our agenda calls for withdrawing economic support from you. Where you place your dollar or dollars is also important, as much money as you're making. Word for word, you heard them. We don't need Molotov cocktails or cursing or violence in general. The most effective way to gain power in the community for equality is through an economic protest. He called for the boycotting of brands like Coca-Cola and Wonder Bread. Going for the pockets and creating economic change is much quicker than trying to get anything passed through the government. Sooner, quicker, faster, and immediate impact. Now, isn't that what we want? We talk about this regularly with guys in our business. I remember a conversation I had in the middle of the pandemic with Dr. Billy Williams. He had not only served in the military, but he started his own business in the insurance industry. If you add up all of his agencies together, it would total up over $1 billion in valuation. And we discussed how the insurance industry, what Emma K was just talking about, can close the wealth gap in America. And how much more peaceful and powerful and dignified it is than just simply rioting. To find that Dr. Martin Luther King believed in the same principles once again solidifies the power of figuring out the economic side of your life. And as I wrap this up, you, my friends, we must empower ourselves economically. Dr. Martin Luther King said himself that no government is gonna change your life. Matter of fact, you don't want them to. I come here tonight and plead with you. Believe in yourself and believe that you're somebody as I said to a group last night, nobody else can do this for us. No document can do this for us. No Lincolnian Emancipation Proclamation can do this for us. No Kennesonian or Johnsonian Civil Rights Bill can do this for us. If the Negro is to be free, he must move down into the inner resources of his own soul and sign with a pen and ink of self-assertive manhood his own emancipation proclamation. Today, in this modern era, we are more in part to drastically change ourselves economically, entrepreneurially, financially, than most people had a chance to in 1968. Always remember, he or she that controls your income 
controls you. And a government that's strong enough to give you everything that you want is also just as powerful to take everything that you have. What change can you inflict on society if you empowered yourself economically? That's not saying it, but more so doing it. I mean, seriously, do you think about it? What changes could you actually make? You know, I'm excited because the names that I just shared with you was just a small slice of the people we had to honor to serve during the pandemic. We helped pay them and many other people that were mentoring and coaching to start their business in the insurance industry over $13 million. Average in their neighborhoods, no name, last names, but they decided to empower themselves economically. They're not in line for PPP loan. They're not in line for COVID st uh, stimulus checks. None of that type of stuff. They created their own reality, their own financial situation, not waiting on anybody else. And if they can do it, think about what you can do too as well. Dr. Martin Luther King didn't feel that just making money for the sake of making money, just to ball out was the end result. No, he talked about situations about making change and making lasting change, and more importantly, making your life better. To feed the hungry, to change our family's life, and give your kids a much better future and more options at their disposal. Money is an incredibly powerful tool, and it is up to you to make up your mind whether or not you want this tool working for you or not for you. Please consider this, especially as we're fighting through this pandemic and getting this past and behind us, it is up to you to empower yourself economically. Just don't wait for somebody to hand you a check. I mean, what did MLK just say there? It's jobs and income because there's a dignity between earning your income versus somebody just handing you a check. Please, I empower you and encourage you to do something with the check that you're getting from the government. Yes, you might be getting another check here and there, and thank goodness for these government benefits or these, these entitlements, but please use those as a seed to sprinkle economic empowerment into your life as an entrepreneur to make that seed bear new fruit versus you just consuming it. And just so you know, it's just not me doing it. You just saw the names and the faces of other people that we've aligned and associated with and partnered up with doing it too as well. And if we can do it, hey, you can do it. And this happens regardless of the color of your skin, your race, your ethnic background, your religious orientation, your sexual orientation, doesn't matter. You can do it in this day and age. It is so much easier to economically empower yourself today with what's available than it was back in the 1960s. America's opportunity to help bridge the gulf between the haves and the have nots. And the question is whether America will do it. There's nothing new about poverty. What is new is that we now have the techniques and the resources to get rid of poverty. And the real question is whether we have the will. That being said, I have a few questions for you to think about. How can you implement Dr. Martin Luther King's philosophy and thought process about money into your life? How can you empower yourself economically? Write that down. Brainstorm. Take some time out. Second question, what is your game plan to get there? Are you finding yourself with a step-by-step -step duplicatable process that you can follow? Number three, do you actually have somebody that you have dialogue with to coach you and mentor you and guide you through these tough decisions. And please just do not resort to just watching a bunch of videos, a bunch of videos, a bunch of videos, and yet there's no accountability, there's no engagement, or worse, there's no action that you're holding yourself accountable to and disciplined to. Now, if you don't have anybody right now, I totally get it. It's a good reason for you to subscribe to a YouTube channel. Maybe eventually over time, you're gonna find a, a person or a, a concept or, or an ideal that you can follow and reach out to that person we have on our YouTube channel and start getting engagement with them. Start dialoguing with them on DMs through Twitter, something, engage, follow. Find somebody on our YouTube channel that you resonate with. And as I wrap up, consider these videos here. Consider watching this interview I had with Dr. Billy Williams, how insurance can close the racial wealth gap. And a third video I want you to come check out too as well is building future millionaires, why we chose entrepreneurs to get a little peek behind the scenes here at our office, but who's at our office, the people that we're associating with and people that we're having fun with and have a, a blast building our lives together. That being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your feedbacks, maybe even your questions. Drop them 
in the comment section below. What are you committing to? Put it in the comment section below. Actually, write that down in the comment section below. I am committing to do blank. I am committing to do blank to change your life economically around once and for all. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. That being said, guys, Martin Luther King Day is a very special day for me as I reflect on what this great man stood for and what my children can learn from and hopefully you too can learn or be reminded from as well. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart and be money smart today.